Well, hello again folks, and I hope you're all in good health. And, if I've managed to edit and upload this in time, that you're either about to eat your Christmas dinner, or you're sitting with your feet up, feeling like a busted sofa. Plus, if you're interested, there'll hopefully be another video uploaded on my other channel, Nitro HV. Anyway, I need to apologise, as I have been promising this video in the comments since August and selfishly decided to hold it back for a Christmas special. But either way, the Springer guys hopefully will get a good kick out of it. Well, that's all the groveling done. But yeah, this was filmed back in the summertime, when the farmer was halfway through cutting his barley, so it was a perfect time to do a wee bit of wood pigeon control. The hide I was using is called the Double Bush from Bushware.com and I covered it in one of the two ply stealth ghost nets. Then, as you saw, I applied a lot of dried grass to it to help it match into the hedge better. And the rifle, if you already haven't guessed from the title, is my Vyrach HW97 N177 calibre, running at about 12 foot pounds of energy with the JSB 10.34 grain pellets. It's fitted with a V-match tuning kit and a walnut stock from Custom Stocks Limited. The scope is an MTC 3-12 by 44 Mamba Light, which I fitted a Tacticam 5.0 and FTS unit to film through the scope. On this particular evening, the wind was coming from the right hand side of your screen. So I set the decoys into a rough semicircle facing into that from 5 to 30 yards away with the empty space in the middle right in front of the hide which is where I was hoping the incoming birds would land but it doesn't always happen like that and sometimes you have to jiggle the pattern about as the day goes on to try and accomplish that Somebody must be in a good mood to be acting the agent in front of the camera. Though, if you ask my wife, she'll probably tell you I'm always acting an agent. Anyway, the decoys are out and we're in the hide. All we need to do is load up and make ready. Oh, I'm also using the Vanguard shooting sticks. But since some spring guns can be a wee bit finicky about shooting off of hard surfaces, I've used the little Dutch beanbag from Equifix to set in the yoke to help cushion it. I hope I've pronounced that right. Anyway, before long I get my first opportunity. At about probably 10 yards. And totally miss it. Now, I'm going for headshots. As I did try the high shoulder shot I'd usually take with my FAC BSA Super 10 one other day and it just wasn't working for me. So I'm going old school and back to the headshot skiing. But you have to hit them and I think I put that one just under his chin. So not the best of starts. Well, at least the birds are landing where I want them, but let's see if I can do better with this one. Now that's more like it, hey? A bit flappy, but that's usually what happens when you head shoot wood pigeons. Unfortunately, after all that flapping, the wood pigeons usually end up lying in a very unnatural position with feathers strewn about the place everywhere. 
So you usually have to go out and set the bird up as a decoy, otherwise it will put off other birds from coming in and landing, which is something I had to do almost every other bird this evening. These birds landed that far to the right, they were just out of camera shot unfortunately, but I could still see it through the scope okay. Don't worry, it's dead, but man, it ain't half throwing a lot of feathers about the place. Yet another bird wanting to land to my extreme right. Thankfully this time though, I got the camera onto it. Unfortunately though, I missed it. It's a young wood pigeon, as it doesn't have the green and white neck bars yet, though it has the white wing bars. And for what must have been under 10 yards, I have no excuse why I missed that. I don't know what I was doing that I didn't even notice these birds here until it was too late. Ah, this one's either a racing pigeon or a feral pigeon, but since I can't see if there's any rings or not on its feet, I'm going to leave it well alone. This one though is definitely a wood pigeon, as you can see the white wing bars as it lands, and the green and white markings on its neck through the scope. It did react quite oddly to the shot, and even though it was a fatal hit, it did have a little more life than I was expecting when I went out and lifted it, so quickly finished it off with a quick twist of the wrist. Unfortunately I took the head clean off the body so I couldn't use it for a decoy. After a while I noticed something land, way off to my far left hand side and it turned out to be a buzzard. Now for those viewers in the good old US of A, you'd probably know this bird more as a hawk, but here in the UK and Europe it's known as a common buzzard, and it's fully protected under law, so anyone that suggests I should shoot it, I'll delete you. Thankfully though, it didn't stay around for long, as I think it saw me trying to kick at it through the hide netting. And it didn't seem to put the pigeons off from landing for too long. Another close one, but hopefully I've learned from my past misses.
I nipped out again for another wee tidy up, as that last bird I shot was lying in a fairly awkward shape, which seems to be putting the other birds off from landing a wee bit more than usual this evening. Though, in saying that, these fields are quite heavily shot over at this time of year, which might explain it. Nothing wrong with that shot, and far less flapping too. Ah, need to pay a lot quicker for that bird. It looks like a few of them's decided to land to my right hand side, but it's that far around it's a wee bit difficult getting onto it with the rifle. That's about the only bad thing I can say about these pop-up hides. They just don't have the same left or right arc of fire. But if you can get your decoys right, you can convince the birds to land in front of you more often than not. But things can change with the wind and the breeze and birds will land where they want to. That one did a fair bit of flapping too, but when I went out to check it, it was dead, so I set it and whatever else was lying out there up as decoys again. That's one thing about head shooting pigeons, you get a lot more blood in your hands than with heart and lung shots. I might be on for a double here if I can get this thing loaded quick enough. Oh, he's changed spots, but I just need to ease the end of the rifle out to hide a bit. Nope, he spotted me and he's away. You wee scunner you. Oh, this is more like it. I'm spoilt for choice here. Now which one am I going to go? Ah yeah, rotters. At least there still seems to be plenty of birds flying about. I just need them to sit long enough so I can get a shot. That's more like it, hey. I think this one's going for a world record in backward rolls. I don't think that one liked the look of the bird I just shot, still twitching.
The birds seemed to be really active at this time of evening, as there just was a nice steady stream of them coming. Oh, would you sit still, would you? Man, I seem to be doing better at the longer range shots than what I was at the real close ones. Ah, where did he go? Wait for it. There he is. The birds are decoying really well now, even with those few dead ones still lying out there. And I seem to be getting on to them and getting the shot off quicker. Well, the sun's about to set and the birds have finally gone off the boil, so it's time to call it quits. Well, for the time I was here, that's a decent bag of pigeons to take home with me. Oh man, I'm glad I didn't take that home with me though. Well folks, I hope you enjoyed that, because I certainly did, as it was a beautiful evening, and a great bit of sport for a spring-powered air rifle. And, if you're watching this in the big day, have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year, and until next time, Take care and look after yourselves, hey.